out of what you endured. And there's some things you just got to come to grips with that you can't do nothing about. Amen. How many know you got to have the wisdom to understand that there's some things you can't change? Come on and say hallelujah. hallelujah. But you got to have the courage, amen, with the spirit of wisdom to understand that there's some things that you can. And then the wisdom to know the difference. Living one day at a time, enjoying one moment at a time, accepting hardships as a pathway to peace. Taking as he did this sinful world as it is. Not as I would have it, trusting that he will make all things right. If I surrender to his will that I may be reasonably happy in this life, supremely happy with him forever in the next. And uh, Reinhold Niebuhr, as we've shared many times, he's the one that's given the credit for the authorship of this poem, this prayer. Amen. But it has been used throughout the kingdom. Amen. That anybody that's in a difficult situation might come to an understanding that God is in control. And I'm praying that God will give you the spirit of wisdom, revelation, and knowledge of him in spite of what we're going through. Amen. Last week we kind of used that supporting text, verse 7 of chapter 3. Y'all know the story about Samuel. Hallelujah. How he was in a, a bad situation. One that Eli, the priest, Hockney and Phineas, the priest's son, amen, representative of the church, were not able to give him what he needed. Amen. But Hannah had prayed and God had answered her prayer. How many realize the solution to the world's problem is in the church? 2 Corinthians 7 and Amen. The chapter around verse 14 says, If my people, which are called by my name, who does what? Oh, Y'all know the text. You see, Samuel was born in a time when there was no open vision. Why was there no open vision? Because the word of God was precious. People had more, amen, emphasis on the word of men than the word of God. Amen. You come to church instead of hearing a word from the God. Amen. You hear about what the president say. You hear, amen, about what the doctors say. You hear about what the lawyers say. But how many came to 37 Market Street to hear what the Lord has to say? Everybody just say with me, ride on, King Jesus. Right? Ride on, King Jesus. Amen. Verse number 2 of First Samuel 3, the Bible says, and it came to pass, and at the time, when Eli was laid down in his place, his eyes began to wax dim that he could not see. We established from last week he could not see physically, but he also couldn't see spiritually. Amen. How are you going to get help if the blind preacher is leading the blind church and they are all in the ditch and can't nobody see that we are in the ditch? Amen. And there the man of God went out in the temple of God. Hallelujah. Where the ark of God was, and Samuel laid down to sleep. The Lord called the Samuel and he said, Here am I. I just want somebody that realized that this is your season of revelation. Just say to the Lord, Here I am. Yeah. Hallelujah. The Lord called the Samuel and Samuel, he answered, Here I am. And he ran unto Eli said, Here I, here am I. Amen. For thou calling me. And y'all know the story. He said, I called thee not. Lie down again. And he went and lay down. The Lord called yet again Samuel. And Samuel arose and went to Eli. And he said, Here am I. Hallelujah. For thou didst call me. And I called not my son. Lie down again. And I told you on last week. Amen. That God is calling you. And you got to be really able to recognize his call. Is there anybody that know that God is calling your life? Is there anybody that know that God is calling your purpose? That in spite of what you think about yourself, you hear God calling you. Well, lift your voice and just say to the Lord, Lord, here am I. Lord, here am I. 
Now clap your hands and give God your best praise. Hallelujah. It's good to recognize, amen, that mama might want the best for you. Daddy might want the best for you. That the democracy in its constitution might have the laws that are written the best for you. Amen. But the practice of the law are contrary to your purpose. I know they say that we are equal. I know they say that we have the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. But you realize that the framers of the Constitution wasn't even thinking about you as a whole person when they wrote it down. That's why I can't rely on my liberty by the words of men. I, I can't rely on my liberty by what my mother or my father said. i got to rely on the truth. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Is there anybody glad you know the truth on this morning? But give God some praise by saying, right on, King Jesus. Right on, right on. On this Palm Sunday, you got to realize that Jesus is coming to your house. Hallelujah. That's why we come together, because the Lord is concerned about you. He's not going to leave you out there all by yourself. Amen. But he went to Calvary's Red Cross, and he died for the home of every man. Amen. And he said in John 3 and 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Is there anybody know that God loves you? I'm so glad that love, God loves you today. Well, help me preach straight away. Look over at somebody. You might have to look above the mask, but look him in the eye and say, God loves you. Come on and say, hallelujah. But you know that your assignment is a assignment of love. You don't let no hatred turn you around. Hallelujah. When they were fighting for civil rights, amen, they used to join together and sing a song like this, we shall overcome. Hallelujah. And I'm glad for, amen, the civil rights. But I realize that no matter how civil society thinks they are, Without God, there won't be no peace. Hallelujah. May there be temporary times when there won't be war. Amen. But the time we're living in, prophetically, it's called the time of wars and rumors of wars. How many realize there is a war that's going on? Amen. Do y'all hear the word of the Lord today? Amen. We're living in a time when there's wars in the home. There's wars at school. There's wars on the job. As I look at you, somebody got the battle scars of the war that's going on. Is there anybody realize that you're a soldier in the army of the Lord? I want every soldier in here to give God some praise and glory. Oh, I'm a soldier. Hallelujah. If I die, I'm going to die in the army of the Lord. I made up in my mind, amen, that I have identified my purpose. Hallelujah. You see, some people join the army because they wanted a regular paycheck. There's other folk join the army because the judge did not give them, amen, much alternatives. Either you're going to sign up or you're going to jail. Some folk join the army because they wanted to shoot and kill. But I joined the army because God called me unto this. If the hear I thank God that you know why you're here right now. If they come on, lift your voice to the Lord and say, here am I. Ha. Hallelujah. So Eli, representative of the high priest, Hophni and Phineas, his sons are the successors. Amen. And they are outside of the will of God. The church has failed God miserably. Instead of preaching Jesus, we preach all kinds of things that have no eternal value. Yes, you came to church, but you left here, amen, not the same way, but worse than you came. Hallelujah, the greatest Protestant church that we know about, amen, is having all kinds of documented issues. Amen, you can't trust the preacher. You can't trust the missionary. You can't trust the priest. You can't trust those that say they are for your good. But I found out that you got to trust in God. How many realize that you got to learn how to take your focus off of men? I'm talking about a soldier. When you know you're a soldier, you realize that 
that my brother is not my enemy. Amen. When you are a soldier, you realize that I can't give up until the battle is over. Straightway, I'm so excited about the fact that I know that we are winners in this battle. And that's why I'm going to keep on fighting. If there anybody came here on Palm Sunday, April 10th, in the year of our Lord, 2022, and you said to yourself, I don't feel no way tired. But I don't believe he brought me this far just to leave me. Somebody that realized that you pray are not the only one that got soldiers that are willing to die for what they believe. But right here, amen, at 37 Market Street, there are some straightway soldiers that going to give God some eternal praise. Somebody give your heart and say, glory! When you make up in your mind that you're going to give God some glory, you say, if I got to put on a mask, I'm still going to give God some glory. You say, if I got to come in separated, I'm going to give God some glory. Why? Because I'm not going to give glory to COVID. I'm not going to give glory to the fears of men. I'm not going to give glory to whatever pandemic or whatever trouble that's coming here or that which should come. I'm going to give God the glory. Because I found out if I learn to give God the glory, he'll reveal unto me the purpose of why I am here. And then the more I give him the glory, the more he understands me, understand that the glory is on the inside. I wish I could get somebody who might be going through sickness, but you're going to give God some glory for the sickness that you're going through, knowing that the glory is going to be revealed in you. Amen. Give God your best praise and say hallelujah. That's what Samuel represents. A young child. Amen. His mother was barren. He was brought to the house of God. The leadership in the house of God was unable to help him. But God knows who you are. Because God is about to make a ship. Samuel is the last judge. Amen. Samuel represents the end of that dispensation. I've been telling you that dispensation is a period of time during which man is tested in respect of obedience to some specific revelation of the will of God. And we've been living in a pandemic dispensation. You need to realize that for the last two years, God has been holding you personable, personally accountable for what he has revealed unto you. And you can't blame Dr. Fauci. You can't blame Amen, Mayor Yonka. You can't blame Bishop McCoy. But if you haven't learned a lesson, you got to say, Lord, I ignored your call. And I'm telling you, as a man that's set in this house, you better answer the call of God. You better respond to the call of God because God is about to make a change. Somebody thank God for the spirit of wisdom. God grant me the serenity to accept the things that I can't change. God give me the courage to change the things that I can. And I need the wisdom to know the difference. That's why I've been preaching to you straight away. God is opening up your understanding. How many know wisdom is the principal thing? But with all you're getting, you got to get an understanding. Look over at somebody and say, I understand why. Come on and say hallelujah. I understand why my child had to get sick. I understand why, amen, I had to be terminated. Amen, but not called. I, I understand why my money started acting funny and my chain started. I wish I could have somebody that realized you're been in a war and the devil tried to take your judge for you. But after all the things you've been through, you still got your job. Is there anybody that still got a place? In spite of the darkness that's in the, the environment, in spite of the doubt that's in society, I know you don't have no confidence in me, but let me tell you about my confidence. I know the Lord will make a way. Somebody say somehow. Now you need to give him a somehow praise. I say the Lord. And then when you see me with all of this passion, I want you to know that.
that this passion is what Jesus had when he came into Jerusalem, knowing he was going to Calvary's rugged cross. He was the king of kings, but he was riding on a donkey. I wish I could get somebody to help me preach. I just say passionately, ride on, King Jesus, ride on. That's the thought I want to leave with you today. And then I know you're going through trials, and I know you're going through tribulation, but you got to see Jesus on his way to Calvary's cross. You got to see Jesus coming to Jerusalem, and then he knows he's going to have to die, but the passion of his purpose wouldn't let him turn back. Hallelujah, Peter told him, don't go there, they want to kill you, but I found out that God has a purpose when they want to kill me, because the more they lie on me, that's the more I give God some praise. Somebody thank God for everybody that tried to kill you. The devil meant it for evil, but God turned it around. Somebody give God some glory. Right on, King Jesus. Come on and say hallelujah. Amen, mother. Amen, Mary Pearl Ingram. Two years ago, hallelujah was taken to Yale, New Haven. As a pastor, I wanted to go in there because I wanted to lay hands. How many know some things you just can't change? Come on and say hallelujah. They prohibited me because of the world's condition. The disease was in there, but I couldn't get there. I couldn't take no all. I couldn't go in like I've done in the past. But how many realize that before she got to the hospital, Jesus had already made a way. Somebody give God some glory for the way that already been made. Come on and say hallelujah. Somebody say yeah, yeah, yeah. Why are you so excited? Because I can see Jesus. He wasn't on the cross. And then he was riding. And then on his way to hell, New Haven, he was riding. Right to the, the, the intensive care room. He was riding when the fear of heaven was going up and down. He was riding. And then with the truth on in her body, somebody give God some praise for a miracle in this house. And give God some glory. Right on. Right Sunday, 
It looked like it was all over. Huh? Can anybody go back with me and remember? Huh? Amen. The weather was relaxed. Huh? Folk would have all kind of palms. Huh? Amen. It might be affixed to their clothes. Huh? Come on and say hallelujah. But I'm so glad huh? there might not be any palm trees. Huh? Amen. In New Haven County. Huh? Amen. It might not be cultural. Huh? But you can go and bring palms huh? into the house of God. Huh? But I want you to know I still got a palm. Huh? I want everybody to huh? lift your hands in the sanctuary. Huh? Lift your hands up to God. Huh? In your palm. Is the identity. Now take your hand and put it in your face. Do you see every line there? It represents God how fearfully and wonderfully made you. Ain't nobody in the world that ever been born and it got your same fingerprint. That's why I got to give God the praise. Because he called me. Somebody lift your hand before the Lord. Oh, yeah. 
to you, it's because God got a purpose in your life. Come on and say hallelujah. Somebody give God some glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So Eli is challenged. Hallelujah. And Eli perceived that the Lord had called the child. In other words, Eli being the priest realized this boy keep coming to me and I didn't call him. Duh, I'm in the house of God. Duh, I, I'm the preacher. Duh, I should be able to do something. Hallelujah, that's how the church is today. Hallelujah, folk demon possessed go to the church and the demon having a body. Come on, man, see that. Ain't nobody here back on Come on and say hallelujah. Amen. The preacher smoking crack. Amen. How old let that fill up in? Hallelujah. Can't even no young girl come in without him looking all cross eyed at her. The devil is a liar. Hallelujah. You can't trust him with your money. Can't trust him with your honey. Can't trust him with your child. You can't trust that fella. But I know a man you can trust. And his name is Jesus. Somebody thank God that no the church trying to trust you. You're blessed. No Come on, somebody take 
God, you know what your praise is. Come on and give God some glory and some praise. Need. 
according to his riches and his glory. Let me explain something to you, just being a little transparent. Since I've been obedient to God coming up here, hallelujah, they refinanced my home. I didn't even ask them, but we had a president that looked something like me, that told Bank of America, you got to do something about this mortgage. I had a 8% mortgage, and they dropped it down to 6.75, but I kept on coming. They dropped it down to 4.375, Lord, show me. 
the way. Somebody thank God for the Holy Ghost there, teach you. And they agree this is one of the most difficult tasks for people who get the knowledge of God and don't know how to judge matters. Because culturally we've been told, don't judge me, don't judge, don't judge this. Anybody ever heard folk tell you, don't judge this, don't judge Amen. Don't judge me. You better judge it. Come on and say, God. You better know the difference between clean and unclean. You better know the difference between holy and unholy. I shared this with y'all. I raised two boys to be men and one daughter to be a woman. There's certain things when the daughters come, I have to tell her about cleaning herself. Amen. I have to tell her, turn that water off. You've been in there too long. Anybody know raised daughters know what I'm talking about? Maybe you talk about yourself. Come on and say that. <laughs> but my sons, okay, time to take a bath. He done been out running, jumping, hollering, screaming. Hallelujah, you can smell him coming through the door. Amen, run right in the bathroom. Two minutes later, got a towel wrapped around me. I just said, boy, who you fooling? Spiritual thing <clears throat> with spiritual and natural with that. That is my son. Hallelujah. But he don't even know the difference between washing off and cleaning up. Come on and say hallelujah. He don't know the difference between straightening up his room and cleaning his room. If I want him to be a man, he got to be able to judge the difference uh, between somebody who just looked good on the outside uh, and somebody that's clean on the inside. Uh, somebody give God some praise. Uh, that he'll make you clean. Uh, and once you get clean, uh, you don't hang around filth. Uh, come on and give God some praise. Uh, somebody glad that he'll call you out of darkness. Uh, he'll call you out of filth. Uh, I know you think I'm, think I'm somebody, uh, but I Hanging around with you. I can't get delivered doing what you're doing. I got to go over with somebody that knows the difference between wrong and right. Somebody give God some praise for knowing the difference. In church, because it ain't so socially conscious that we didn't tell a little girl you were born female. But we gonna let her learn something in science that makes her feel it's her choice. Gender fluidity. The devil is a liar. Amen. Amen. Somebody thank God that you know the truth. Amen. But you have to be so delicate yeah. that you don't destroy a confused child because it's still a child. Yeah. And that's the other side of the church. We don't got so hard till we kill it, folk, at the abortion clinic. In the name of Jesus. And you know that's just as about as crazy as a full out of bill with my picture on it. Come on and say hallelujah. It don't have no value nowhere. You gonna kill somebody because they're not doing what God said do? No, what you do is have a delicacy. It might thank God that your parents, your grandparents, they prayed for you when you was all wrong. Come on and say hallelujah. They were patient with you when you were doing that with your knee. Yeah, yeah. That's what right on King Jesus. That's what I'm trying to communicate on this Sunday. Let Jesus come into your heart. Don't worry about the scribes. Don't worry about the Pharisees. Bible students know that when the scribe and the Pharisees saw that these people were praising God, they got upset. You need to praise God until the devil get mad. Yeah, man, somebody give God some praise right now. Somebody give God some glory. Look at your neighbor and say, the more I praise him, and then if you ain't gonna praise him, don't say it. And the more I praise him, but the better I feel. Somebody give God some praise according to your feeling. And then you might just start out with a little pity pack, but keep on feeling God. That's what we say sometimes when we communicate with people and it don't look like they understand. We say something like this, can you feel me? Is there anybody that feels God? He's in my hands. Is there anybody that feels God? He's in my feet. I know it's not cultural, but you would give God some praise. But I know you feel me. For something on the inside been working on the outside.
Hallelujah. Ah, uh, everybody stand on the table. I can't finish it. Look at your neighbor and say, there's going to be a part three. There's going to be a part three.
If you just let God do what he's doing, God is going to give them something that the world is going to value. And, and you won't give God the glory for it in advance. Somebody thank God for the wisdom being put in the heads of our children. Somebody thank God for the works that God are blessing us. Don't you know he's been blessing us?
I done gave the benediction. What y'all want to hang around? Where's the baby at? Where's the baby?